Josh Allen takes his undefeated Bills on a short week to Miami to face the surprisingly unbeaten Dolphins and the surprisingly improved Tua Tonga-Vailoa. Here is Dolphins coach Mike McDaniel on the growth he has seen in quarterback Josh Allen. You know, saw his growth in Wyoming. That's what was really cool was, it, it, you know, it was a, an example of, you know, young in his career, the guy's a giant with the giant arm, but, you know, he had kind of like a, um, I don't know, a stigma about accuracy or something that um, I think each year in his college career, he drastically improved. Um, you can tell, which was a big deal to me with him coming out because you learn a lot, um, not by hearing, but by seeing. And what you could see was um, a guy diligently working at his craft who's however old he is. So um, fast forward to, to the league, and I think we've all been witnesses to, you know, he's steadily become, you know, one of the best players in the National Football League. Easily could argue he's the best one. Um, and that it's not because he's God's gift. It's because he's unbelievably talented, but it's because you can tell more than that. It's because he works at his craft. And he keeps getting better and better and better. We saw in year three, he suddenly became a guy that was making it happen. He was noticeably different. And he's just built on that ever since. And he keeps getting better and better, Peter. Josh Allen right now, I don't know who I would say is better between him and Mahomes. I'll say it's a tie for number one. Allen is spectacular and uh, got it done on Monday night, got it done week one playing against some very good teams. This is not going to be easy. It's going to be hot. The Dolphins are aggressive. They're confident. But there's just something about this Bills team. A point that we made earlier in the week, it almost feels like, you know, back in the 80s or 90s, you would feel like there was a team that was just going to kick the crap out of everyone all year long. It's it's bunched up since then, and that's good for the game. This just feels like an old-school team that's going to kick the crap out of everyone all season long. It looks like it, Mike, and on one hand, you say it's a 17-game season and you never know, but I, I, I look at when I went to their training camp at St. John Fisher College in July, you know what I walked away saying? The depth on this team is unbelievable, and I'll give you two examples, okay? You look what happened last Monday when uh, on Saturday before the game, Gabriel Davis, who is in the top five of number two receivers in the NFL right now, everybody said, oh, he's going to develop into one of the best. No, right now he is, he is one of the best number two receivers. And to me, he's one and one a uh, with Stefan Diggs, but you watch him play and he makes such huge plays. Five touchdown catches in two playoff games last year. And so anyway, he sprains his ankle, right? And the Buffalo Bills, wow, we're not going to have Gabe Davis on, on Monday. Wow, what, what are we going to do? So they go out and they score 41 points against the Tennessee Titans, who even though they got 41 points put up on them, they're still probably a top 10 to 12 defense in the NFL. That's number one. And number two, look how they've played in the secondary without Tredavious White, who is a top 12 to 15 corner in the NFL. And he's been on the pup list and he hasn't been available. So he's gone for at least this month. And so if you look at what they have done without two of their absolute standard bearers, you know, that's, it just shows that their depth you know, Brandon Bean, whatever you can say about uh, about how, who has built a good roster in the NFL, and over time we've praised John Schneider for that and Eric DaCosta and, and, and Ozzie Newsome and, and all these guys. Brandon Bean right now has built the best roster top to bottom in football. Kansas City's close, but in my opinion, you know, Buffalo's the best roster top to bottom in football and the depth on that roster is going to keep them in the pennant race, even if they get significant injuries, in my opinion. And you know who's looming out there for both the Buccaneers and the Bills? We assume he's going to sign with the Rams. 
and maybe that's the proper assumption, maybe to the point of a presumption. Hell, they have the locker with his name on it still at the training facility, but Odell Beckham Jr. has been linked to the Bills. Vaughn Miller's been recruiting him, and Brandon Bean hasn't ruled it out, and at some point, Tom Brady and OBJ maybe finally get together after all these years of this mutual admiration. We saw it before the game in New Orleans on Sunday. OBJ was on the sidelines there, not at the Rams game. He was at the Saints-Bucks game. That could be a difference maker for the Bills at some point, too. When he's healthy. When he's healthy. But could you imagine that offense with Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs? You throw OBJ into the mix? Holy crap. But we'll see. Somebody's going to get him at some point. And we saw what a difference he made for the Rams once he got up to speed last year. They need to move at the right time to get OBJ onto the roster because he could be the guy who becomes that secret weapon that helps lift a team. But right now, the Bills don't need much lift. The Dolphins are going to have their hands full. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.